We talked during the last session about sexual orientation as a concept, and now I want to discuss different historical perspectives. The reason this is important is that we have cultural ideas and notions about same-sex relationships, and I want us to examine where those ideas have come from. In general, the history of same-sex conduct is that it is unacceptable. This antiquated cultural norm comes from old Western traditions that are rooted in religion. Both the Old and the New Testament considered it a matter of moral transgression. While Judeo-Christian teachings dominated Western thought for most of human history, the religious notions of same-sex relations did shift some during the medieval period, where it became as much a matter of state control as did many other behaviors. In modern society, it has been redefined as a sickness, which is in symmetry, really, with the modern scientific model of understanding the world. So in early human history, say as far back as the 6th century BC, cultural anthropologists have found evidence that there were attitudes towards non-procreative sex being negative. So the idea there is around the 6th century BC, human beings start to realize that there's something about sex. After sex, eight months later, a baby is born. And there's the recognition that sex is linked to reproduction. And then the idea evolves that sex should be only associated with reproduction. So this idea of heterosexual conduct, that heterosexual conduct and reproduction are linked together, that is supported by evolution types of arguments, even though there's really no understanding of science in the 6th century BC, there's still this linkage between sex and procreation and the importance of procreation. So these ideas evolved that sperm has unique and wonderful power, that spilling sperm outside a nurturing body would be a waste of that, and so there from that flows this idea that homosexuality was an abomination that would assure damnation. These are the ideas that evolved later in the Old Testament. So from a social standpoint, in early human history, marriage was a very important institution in society and it was expected of everybody. And from this idea actually comes the modern concept of the state's interest in marriage. You know, the state has argued an interest in marriage and the federal government 15 years ago, and in many states now still there is an argument that the states have an interest in marriage and the states don't believe that same-sex marriage should be condoned. In early human history, marriage was so important that upon the death of a spouse, the surviving spouse was expected to remarry. So if there was nobody marriageable in that village or with that group of people, the surviving spouse might be taken into the household by her brother or perhaps even her husband's brother to be raised among their wives. so that she and her children would be brought back into her brother or her brother-in-law's household and they would be supported by him. So the idea starts to evolve that same sex between women is less harmful than it is between men because of the importance of the man's role in procreation. So now I want to talk a little bit about the story of Sodom. Many of you may have heard of the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. According to this biblical story, the city of Sodom was a place of idolatry. So in this case, the word idolatry is referring to people who were worshiping idols, not worshiping God as Judeo-Christian teachings envision God. And so God is not happy with the city, and God decides that he wants to destroy the city. Now there is a person who lives in the city named Lot, and Lot did worship God and was following God's teachings. And so God sends two angels to Lot's home in order to test the rest of the city and see how the city will react to these angels. So the men from the city come to Lot's house and they tell Lot that they want to have access to the two men inside. And there are some biblical interpretations that believe that the city dwellers were actually wanting to have sexual relationships with the men that were in Lot's house. Some interpretations do not believe that. So there's some tension as to what interpretations are correct. But the gist of it is that a crowd gathers and the crowd is struck blind by God. Lot is told to 
flee the city. He is instructed to take his wife and children and that nobody should look back. The city is destroyed by fire. Lot's wife does not obey the Lord's command. She looks back and she's turned into a pillar of salt. So the reason that this story is so important for discussing this concept of same-sex relations is that this is where the concept of sodomy comes from. This is where the word sodomy comes from is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. In the English language, sodomy is referring to crimes against nature. Those crimes against nature consist of anal or oral sex, whether it's homosexual or heterosexual, or sexual activity between a person and a non-human animal. So it's this concept of crimes against nature that natural sex means that you're having heterosexual procreative sex. On the other hand, in ancient Greece, homosexual behavior was much more common. It was very acceptable and even encouraged. Homosexuality, or what's known as pederasty, was an institution that was part of Greek culture. It was built into the social fabric of Greek life. And remember, we talked earlier at the very first session in this course about the phallus and Aristotle's vision of the phallus that it symbolized strength, power, and wisdom. Women, on the other hand, seen as defective men, were bound and regulated to the role of child rearing because they were seen as neither worthy nor capable of serious male companionship. So this idea of homosexuality being built into the social fabric of Greek life, this is what's known as pederasty. And so it's referring to the Greek love of boys, the acceptability of older Grecian men taking young boys under their wing into a mentoring kind of relationship and introducing them to the social world, but at the same time having a sexual relationship with them. So this idea is built around the ideal of love. It's, it wasn't a usurious or it wasn't a predatory type of relationship, but rather it was a loving, nurturing kind of relationship. And it was seen as the type of love that uplifts the human spirit. So love is thought of as not necessarily a relationship between a husband and wife, but instead as something that's necessary to strengthen the community solidarity, that there had to be connections between people. And in Greek political life, the public sphere was dominated heavily by men. And so that love, that community love, was something that men experienced in their social life. So pederastry is a very complex spiritual love that also embraced physical relationships. And in that type of situation, the older male that was part of the social world and had a place in the public sphere, they took personal responsibility for a young boy in introducing them to the public, in allowing them to become part of the community, but also there was a loving relationship that included sexual intimacy between them. So purely sexual activity was not condoned. It was something that, that was something that was not acceptable. But this was a very holistic spiritual type of relationship that included all aspects of a relationship between these older men and young boys, including a physical relationship. So there is some movement from the perspective of homosexuality being a sin to it becoming a crime and that starts to get framed up during the Middle Ages. During the Middle Ages, that's a period of time that reaffirms the concept of naturalness of heterosexual reproductive sex. The idea that marital sex was something that was good and that marital sex needed to be mainly for the purpose of procreation. That the goodness of marital sex is contingent upon the ultimate conception of this new life. So any kind of unnatural sexual urges, those are beyond the bounds of the Christian community and the teachings of the Judeo-Christian philosophy. So the concept of natural sex is reaffirmed by St. Augustine. St. Augustine defines natural sex and says that the sins against nature include 
activities like anal intercourse, masturbation, bestiality, mouth genital contact with either sex, or heterosexual sex where the man was not in the dominant position. So there's a very, very narrow definition of what is natural sex. And again, thinking in terms of patriarchy, maleness as the norm, St. Augustine is reinforcing those concepts by advancing the idea that it's unnatural for men and women to have sex in any kind of position where men were not in the dominant position. St. Thomas Aquinas in the 13th century also furthers this notion by saying that homosexual sex was more heinous than heterosexual unnatural sex.